Yeah. Ready? Okay. How's everybody going today? Fine. Hi. How was your weekend? Very, Very long. busy. <laughs> Very busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, did you happen to go to the market this weekend? Uh, no. No. Yeah, we were. When was the last time you were in the market? Last week. Come. What did you buy? Uh, groceries. Groceries for my uh, babies. For did you happen week? to see the, the labels of the country of origin of the product? No. No, did you? Well, mm -hmm. if you go to the market uh, now, it's, it's um, very common that if you look at the label, you, you will find products in, in Calimax, for instance, uh, products from Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, Chile. Of course, products of the U.S. We are neighbors, and if you go to if you go to to Costco uh, and you buy a DVD, you will find in the label that is made in Mexico. So that product was manufactured here, cross the border, has a new label up, up there, and get back to our stores. Well, that's it. That's a common example of what globalization is. Last week we talked about the, the, what is globalization, so we will continue in this second session, session with, the, with this topic. Next. Well, uh, to begin the lesson, an overview of today's lesson is uh, we're going to see three points. The one is the opening, a brief history of globalization. Uh, I added uh, some new data of what we see last weekend, last week, sorry, uh, a discussion. We're gonna have a little chit chat here in, in, in class about what is globalization. And the last part is a conclusion. And we'll uh, try to find or uh, discuss uh, some examples of globalization, just like the one I just gave you. Next, Francisco. So, um, can somebody help me with these two questions? Any ideas? Globalization is well a, a transportation of merchandise throughout the world or getting information of all the world in a second or it's like having everything that you need at your disposal uh, at your uh, at your hands because you can buy whatever you want from whatever nation you want. You know? And how they uh, how that those files that you mentioned Melissa Elsa, sorry. Uh, make the world today different from the world we did uh, twenty or thirty years ago. How is different the world? Because getting information was really hard. To, to get it because you have to go through books and the books didn't have uh, accurate data and you cannot buy anything from Europe if you want it uh, or from the United States. If you want to buy a TV, you have to go to the store and now you can just, it's different because it's faster, it's like quicker, everything is so, so what you hand in seconds that I'm impressed. Yeah. And all of that we owe this to the technology. Is that right? Yeah. How is yeah. that possible? Uh, because of different platforms that we know mm -hmm. these days, uh, we are uh, real, real um, information. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that way, if they die, somebody like just like yesterday, uh, an artist, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Very fast. Way. In a minute. Yeah. I think that's why. And as I was mentioned, uh, mentioned at the beginning, we can buy anything Everything. around the world. Okay. Isn't that true? I can yeah. buy a computer which is manufactured in China or Japan, and I can have it even delivered at the door of my house. Yeah. And if I think about this same issue, if, if it was possible uh, 20 or 40 years ago, it was a little bit, a little bit harder. To see. Yeah. I dream. <laughs> and a dreamer in some yeah. cases. That's exactly. Okay. Next, Francisco. Well, what what about globalization? Why is so important? On how come that 
the concept of globalization became so as a cliche or something like that? Well, um, the main issue about globalization is that economic integration between the countries. Uh, Mexico, for instance, is a is a good example about this. Uh, in the in the 90s, Mexico began to write or to accord uh, with other countries to have a free uh, uh, free commerce, a free trade and free commerce uh, through the frontiers. So we signed a treaty with Canada and U.S. and then in the under the administration of President Cedillo, we signed a treaty with the uh, European Union, and we have in recent years uh, some treaties with uh, Chile, Colombia, and Peru, and some other countries. Even I can mention that Mexico is one of the principal countries in, around the world who has uh, a high number of treaties with uh, uh, economic treaties with some other countries. So what's the uh, another uh, another topic about globalization that is based in market liberalization and trade liberation? If there is not market liberation and trade liberation, there is no globalization. And that made uh, a globalization an economic topic mainly. The next one is well, and I can give you an example, another example. In the 90s, globalization countries grew at five percent rate per capita per year. That means um, those who uh, the authors and thinkers who support globalization, they say, hey, if we the countries integrate in the economical issue, they can grow to grow up together. But that is not all the all the same in all the cases. So we'll we'll learn about it uh, a little bit uh, later. Next Francisco? Okay. And continuing with this uh, this topic of globalization, I can uh, I can mention that not all the countries participate in equal conditions. Uh, U.S. even when they signed with Mexico the NAFTA, they protected its farmers, the farmers with uh, some protectionist measures. And for instance, uh, they don't get they don't allow the avocado through the frontier because. The farmers are a strong political group in the U.S. They have a power to lobby in the U.S. Congress or in the Senate. So they pressure the, the U.S. government and they demand that the, the close to the frontier for the Mexican avocado. Uh, well, and some students have concluded that people think yeah people around the world is worried about globalization, the impacts of globalization. They say it will increase crime because, uh, I don't know if you get to know this uh, phrase that immigrants stole our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And countries like the US or, uh, or in some countries in the Europe, European Union, they believe that globalization will uh, increase crime because the the native uh, the population will uh, lose their jobs with immigrants because they say immigrants uh, prefer to have a job than a higher wage in the in the, in the paycheck. Next, Francisco. Okay, uh, and now we'll have a little history about globalization. Uh, we can consider. The first globalization between the 1488 and, and, the, and the, as the European expansion and navigation began. Not all the authors are uh, in agreement with, with this. Uh, the majority talk about the, the, the first globalization was between 1870 and the 1940, the 1940, the 1940 sorry. And it was a result of the lower transportation cost uh, uh, besides the reduction in trade barriers as well as increasing agricultural exports. And once again, the immigration comes to discussion, the discussion when uh, at, this, at this time, 
the 10% of the world population travel around the world looking for new or for, for better conditions for, uh, for a living. Next question. Well, this is a map in the 15th century when the European countries, or well, those times they were uh, more like uh, rains, and they began to the, the expansion, their expansion around the world, mainly in America, the coast of Africa, and the southern Asia. With, uh, with their expansion began the expansion of commerce and, and trades. And next, Francisco? Well, <clears throat> but not everything was uh, sweet because between the first and the second war in the 20th century was characterized by nationalism, nationalism and protectionist measures. Uh, even in the present time, nationalism uh, emerged as a barrier against globalization. What we saw a few months ago in, uh, in England in the Brexit was part of it was a result of a nationalist movement that uh, talked about and to the society in, in Britain about uh, we can do it alone, we don't need the European Union. We gave a lot of money to the European Union, so we must cut the bridges and do it for ourselves. And also it was for protectionism, right? Uh, yeah, because uh, one of the problems with globalization is that uh, it uh, makes the companies compete with, with, between them and only survive the, the stronger ones. And the little companies tend to disappear in the economic scenario. Next, Francisco. This is the world in the 19th century when was the, uh, was the second globalization. Next, Francisco. Uh, there was another period of globalization between 1950 and the 1980s, and this was because of Europe, North America, and Japan established uh, trade relationships. And this is a, a uh, in the uh, the the globalization began around the 1980s. So we can even confuse them: the second, the third, and the fourth. We can confuse them. Uh, the historians. Uh, try not to talk like a, a specific uh, date. They talk about some years or dates overlaps one and another. And the, the thing here is that Mexico, China, Hungary, Brazil, and India began to participate in globalization. That gave us the result. The manufacturing exports grow from 25 to 80 percent. Next question. Well, next. Uh, one of the issues with globalization is about the uh, topic of education. Uh, everybody, and uh, every, um, all the countries, all the leaders, political leaders in the countries, they believe that, oh, well, if we, if we sign some economic tre uh, treaties with other countries, then we can improve our condition. And that is not, it's not that easy. Because uh, thinkers about globalization say, hey, if you want uh, better results in globalization, you must invest in education. So it's not like a simple formula that, oh, Mexico and China sign a treaty and they will work together. It's not that easy. And they, uh, they say globalization by itself does not solve the problem for wages. For that country should invest in education. Next, Francisco. Uh, well, the great debate in globalization is about its ability to, to reduce poverty. And China is a good example about it. Now that it is an economic, uh, uh, a strong you know, economic country, in 1978, the, it's, uh, the poor population was 250 million. And in the last year, it was 36 million. I searched for the data as you recommended. Next. Well, there are three, three reasons why globalization failed. One of them is uh, wrong state policies and inadequate infrastructure. Well, 
as our president. I have a problem with this report, <laughs> with this, as you can see. Uh, the second reason is geographical and climatic disadvantage, and the third is other countries are far ahead in globalization problems. This is uh, particular because countries like the uh, US, Canada, Mexico even, are in the process of globalization far, far away uh, compared with some other countries like, uh, we can mention for instance Venezuela or some countries in, in Central America. Next, Francisco. Well, the key issue is uh, that the state policies must be rolled into the transition to a global economy. That means Promote an economic reform agenda, open the frontiers, raise uh, taxes for import and exports. <laughs> That's not that easy, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, invest in education. Next process. This is the map of the world today, globalized world, I put as a title. And we can see some, some examples. Uh, uh, I will mention some of them. Economic and Monetary Union, only in, you, in some countries within Europe. Thank you, that's all right. Uh, or uh, the case of Canada, US, and Mexico, that's a multilateral free trade area. The, uh, what's the difference? This is a political union in the case of Europe, in the case of uh, our country, it's not, it's not a, a political integration, it's only an open frontier for uh, free flow compared to investment and, and goods and services and manufacturing manufacturing products. Next question. Well, as a conclusion, we can say globalization is an economic, economic, political, social, technological, and cultural global process. It, its main impact is the opening borders to free flow of investment, manufacturing goods, services, and people. Next, Francisco. And uh, I would like, I would like if uh, that between you, in the next two minutes maybe, uh, help me to to answer this one. Uh, Ricardo, what do you think about the first one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, um, David, the, the definition of, of the con of concept of the globalization uh, give me a uh, certain knowledge about what it is and how it works mm -hmm. because uh, I didn't know about globalization I never use it and I think uh, I have a, a question the man the man uh, knowledge about work is part of globalization um, uh, the our labor not non merchandise. Mm -hmm. uh, I talking about uh, the man work, the hours of the man work. How can I explain that? Um, uh, work. the job of the company. Yeah, worker, man is, worker, is man, man hours has to work. do something with it. Uh, uh, the work is it's it's it's. Is it part of it's, globalization? Yeah, it's a part of of globalization. Uh, it's it measured in, in the in, in, in the economic area you're working. For instance, uh, in what do you do here in Tijuana? The manufacturing industry obviously has to do a real deal with the globalization. Okay. Because almost all the manufacturers are foreigners, yes. so and they are bringing jobs to Tijuana. So. Okay. Elisa, what do you think about the second question? Well, as you said, maybe the first place they must invest in education so they can uh, have the possibility of growing uh, once in, in this process of globalization. Okay. Elsa, the last? We consider that countries need to know stronger on the basis of political relations. I think that both should be promoted because if you don't have a good political relation, you cannot work. Uh, you, don't, you, you cannot have a good Strong economic relation. Perfect. Uh, Francisco, the last one, please. The homework, boys <laughs> and girls. Each student must record a three minutes video and try to explain what is globalization on your daily lives. Uh, uh, in the video, I want you to explain a 
common example of how globalization impacts your daily life. So that's all for today. I hope you like the lesson. And if you don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Thank you.